Chapter 72, Annabeth. Percy, help me, Annabeth yelped. She shoved her entire body against the left door, pressing it towards the center. Percy did the same on the right. There were no handles or anything else to hold on to. As the elevator car ascended, the door shook and tried to open, threatening to spill them into whatever was between life and death. Annabeth's shoulders ached. The elevator's easy listening music didn't help. If all the monsters had to hear that song about liking pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, no wonder they were in the mood for carnage when they reached the mortal world. We left Bob and Damison, Percy croaked. They'll die for us, and we just... I know, she murmured. Gods of Olympus, Percy, I know! Annabeth was almost glad for the job of keeping the doors closed. The terror racing through her heart, at least, kept her from dissolving into misery. Abandoning Damison and Bob had been the hardest thing she'd ever done. For years at Camp Half-Blood, she had chafed as other campers went on quests while she stayed. She'd watched as others gained glory, or failed and didn't come back. Since she was seven years old, she had thought, Why don't I get to prove my skills? Why can't I lead a quest? Now she realized that the hardest test for a child of Athena wasn't leading a quest or facing death in combat. It was making the strategic decision to step back, to let someone else take the blunt of the danger, especially when that person was your friend. She had to face the fact that she couldn't protect everyone she loved. She couldn't solve every problem. She hated it, but she didn't have time for self-pity. She blinked away her tears. Percy, the doors, she warned. The panels had started to slide apart, letting in a whiff of ozone? Sulfur? Percy pushed on his side furiously, and the crack closed. His eyes blazed with anger. She hoped he wasn't mad at her, but if he was, she couldn't blame him. If it keeps going, she thought, if it keeps him where he needs to be, then let him be angry. I will kill Gaia, he muttered. I will tear her apart with my bare hands. Annabeth nodded, but she was thinking about Tartarus' boast. He could not be killed. Neither could Gaia. Against such power, even titans and giants were hopelessly outmatched. Demigods stood no chance. She also remembered Bob's warning. This may not be the last sacrifice you make to stop Gaia. She felt that truth deep in her bones. Twelve minutes, she murmured. Just twelve minutes. She prayed to Athena that Bob could hold the up button that long. She prayed for strength and wisdom. She wondered what they'd find once they reached the top of this elevator ride. If their friends weren't there controlling the other side. We can do this, Percy said. We have to. Yeah, Annabeth said. Yeah, we do. They held the doors shut as the elevator shuddered and music played. While somewhere below them, a titan and a giant sacrificed their lives for their escape.